Welcome, everybody, to today's Member Forum meeting. Um, the usual safety information. I'd like to draw your attention to the emergency evacuation procedure, so please exit the building by the nearest exit and congregate by the cathedral. Full details of the questions submitted to Member Forum and the Mayor's written replies have been published on the Council's website. Groups have submitted their questions in priority order and are presented rotating around the party groups. Each councillor has asked a maximum of two questions about one topic or two separate questions about two different topics. Councillors have a maximum of two supplementary questions. If a councillor asks one question, they have one supplementary. If a councillor asks two questions, they can ask one supplementary per question asked. So, the first question that we have today is from councillor Annie Stafford-Townsend and it's a question on harbour changes and housing issues. Councillor Townsend, do you have any supplementaries? Hi, thank you. Yes, I do. Um, so, in response, residents are asking, isn't it a bit late to be publishing the, the uh, review in the future after the fee changes have already come in? So, I'd like to ask the Mayor, will you pause the fee changes until the consultation has happened fully? I think there has been some confusion over to the, the component parts of the, the work around the harbour, which um, I hope that people are helping people to navigate the different elements of that between the governance, uh, the placemaking um, element of it, of it all. Uh, but the fees uh, uh, review, the benchmarking exercise, um, we are right to do that after so many years, it can go ahead and, uh, and so we have, but that doesn't uh, stop uh, the other areas of the, of the review uh, progressing. Do you have a further supplementary? I mean, it would be good if the benchmarking was published so that the users of the harbour are aware of what those benchmarks are because that's currently not clear. So I think for them to have clarity would be very useful. I do have a supplementary for my second question, if, if you want me. So I don't know. So is, that, so is that a response to your supplementary? So you're, just to clarify, you're saying that you want the, 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 um, the report published? Yes. So is that a clarification? So answered? I'm guessing that's a question about publishing a report. Yeah. The, uh, the benchmarking has commercially sensitive material in it. Uh, so we as an authority have to be careful the way we, uh, we handle that. Uh, we have talked to the team about what can be shared. We're happy for people to continue to make the case for us to share it. And in the meantime, we'll look at the potential of um, issuing a redacted uh, version of that benchmarking exercise. That's great. I think that'll be very reassuring to harbour users. Thank you. So, do you have a supplementary to your second question then? I do. Um, so, excuse me. excuse me, Lord Mayor. This is becoming a little bit familiar. I'm really sorry to butt in, but the rule is, and you've just stated it in the preamble one question, one supplementary. It's not as a supplementary followed by a, a a conversation, then another question, and then a, another response. It's pretty simple, and we've seen this too many times. Can we just, can we just have a bit of order here, please? Okay. Thank you very I think, much. I think Thank what, you. I'm, what I'm trying to do is to get the best out of this whole, whole, the whole point about asking questions and getting answers. It's about I do. Question, and it, really okay. 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 Fair enough. Okay. I think in this case, I'm going to have to bow to this, and you've had two questions, even if they are about the same thing. Sorry. Um, I will be more um, rigid about it. I do think what I am trying to do is to get answers, which I think everybody would want, but I, um, I take the point. Uh, moving on to the second Labour question, the first Labour question from Paul Coggan. Uh, it's about net zero cities. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I've got uh, just one um, supplementary. Um, thank you very much for um, your response, uh, Mayor, f about the um, co-innovation lab. I was wondering if you had any sort of timetable on, you know, w when that's likely to be formed and go forward. Uh, well, we have a lot of pieces of work going on on many fronts on uh, climate change. You'll know the work we're leading with 3CI. We just had a meeting this week on COP and 
uh, you know, the preparation for COP with the Foreign Office and uh, representatives of the Teeks King's team who we were up at the embassy, the US embassy, just a few weeks ago um, on a session on just transition. So just to say, I'm only saying that because we put a lot on the shoulders of that team. Um, but uh, listen, I'll, I'll come back with more specific dates. We want to get as much done as quickly as we can. Thank you very talk, much. Talk to Kai outside of here. You tap him on the shoulder. Thank you. Uh, moving on quickly to uh, Conservative question one, Jonathan Hucker. Do you have a supplementary, Jonathan? Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Marvin, for your um, very informative answer to my question. Uh, just one supplementary, if you don't mind. Um, the cost has actually been calculated using an interest rate applicable to council investments rather than council <laughs> borrowings. Um, so can I ask that the calculation is re-performed um, using the more appropriate methodology? And um, by that I mean the actual cost rather than the opportunity cost. Um, I think that the answer would be materially different. Thank you very much. I think the best thing I can do there is uh, uh, facilitate a conversation with our 151 officer. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary to your second question? Um, no, that's ju just the one supplementary, that's all, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so we're now down to uh, Councillor Tim Kent uh, from the Liberal Democrat Group. Do you have any you, supplementaries? Uh, yeah, supplementary to question one. Um, I'm sure you share my concern that this policy change will undermine the work of the SEN department to ensure early and effective investigation. As Simona is merely a contractor of the Integrated Care Board and we are a partner member of the ICB, can you ensure we use our voice to lobby to change this discriminatory and most probably illegal policy? Well, before I go into any conversation uh, with any of our partners, I'd be very careful about the kind of the language I'd use to describe their work. I think it, it always helps if we go into, uh, into those kind of conversations with a degree of good faith um, uh, rather than adversarialism. Uh, but I will say um, we are working hard to, uh, to, uh, to contribute to the, the development of the integrated care system. Uh, with the ICB and ICP, which in and of itself tells you about the level of challenge that the NHS is going through as it faces another restructure. Um, at the LGA City Regions Board, uh, along with the LGA um, Health and Wellbeing Board, the, the, the level of purchase and presence of local authorities in the integrated care system has been a cause of concern, and it's been a, a piece of work that we've kind of uh, raised at the national level uh, from, from all local authorities. Um, and I would say it's, it's also something Stephen sits on the Integrated Care Board now as well, uh, which shows our level of commitment, uh, giving considerable time to that. And we are, we are working hard to make sure that the potential of the, of the ICS to offer genuine integration and, and collaborative leadership on health and wellbeing in the city is one that's fulfilled um, and, and not lost. But I, I wouldn't take away from the scale of the challenge our health partners face in trying to be accountable to the place in which they work, but also being accountable to a Westminster-based, um, uh, Whitehall-based ad administration uh, uh, also. Do you have a second supplementary, Tim? I do. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm not too sure that will satisfy parents of autistic children. Uh, second supplementary. Uh, mm. So thank you for your answer. Uh, a couple of factual corrections. Ofsted couldn't raise concerns because they're actually not allowed to investigate SEND. It's in their terms of reference. It was the investigation of children's services uh, care, not SEND. Uh, legal officers were crystal clear. They did not perform an investigation. They stated this in writing Do you have a question, Tim? I do, Lord Mayor, and I'll get onto that now. I just need to put that in writing in, on the record <coughs> that the Mayor's answer was factually incorrect. Um, my supplementary is a simple one. Given your written answer to me today, and in consultation with the Chair of Overview and Scrutiny Management Board, Councillor Dyer, we agree that you have authorised in writing that we begin the process of the external investigation. Can you ensure us that you nor your office will try to block this any further? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think if we, if we think back as well, um, and to save your blushes, I know that you, know, there's, you, you do seem to be at the centre of quite a few of the kind of uh, conspiratorial debates uh, in, you know, in the city. Uh, what I also said was, what you could do is own the cost of that investigation, so that we can actually make a, a you know a genuine view of whether it's a, a value for money, in light of the Ofsted inspection that was going to be happening in Bristol and with the ongoing work that's happening in the city. I, I mean, I I'm trying to where where people would be reasonable would be reasonable, but 
I think, you know, if you had your way, we'd be running investigations uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, because it feeds the material that you put out in your, your leaflets. But that wouldn't be a good way of running the authority. Uh, so you c what I've said is if you come back with the costs, then we can talk about the actual cost, the officer time, and the benefits you think it would bring to the city. No, we're coming about and, the investigation. Don't worry about had, it. You've I given think, us you know, an authorization. We have Thank to play you, by the same rules for everybody. We've had supplementary questions. You've asked me to be tight about this. I will stay tight for the rest of the meeting. Councillor Hopkins, I think I might. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Do you have supplementaries? Yes, thank you. Uh, firstly, I'm glad that the Mayor has, and the Cabinet Member have made visits and have now recognised some of the very important work that's actually done at the Community Garden. I could add a number of other items to the list that the Mayor has actually given so far. I'm also glad that the uh, Cabinet Member has now become involved because the result of that is that the uh, proposed rent increase for this empty bowling green has gone from 5,000%. So again, Carrie, to, I'm going to press to people 2, for questions. 2,500%, uh, and that is an improvement. Can the mayor please assure us that the uh, meeting provisionally arranged for next week will look at all aspects of this and come to an arrangement that actually complies with what he says, and that is to maintain this uh, important institution and to support it rather than kill it? Thanks, Councillor Hopkins. Um, it, it's a process, and it's, it's one that I, I think is a collaboration. And uh, you know, both me and Marvin have both visited the garden. I've, I visited last month, and we've had several conversations with the leaders of that group since. Um, it's the information that was in your question and the questions that were submitted is is old, is out of date, and it's a bit preemptive when we're in the process of negotiating something. It's, it's a conversation that's open and I've asked the garden to come in and meet with us because I think part of the complexity of the, the beast that is the council is that they've had several different lines from several different offices and that's something that I regret and I'm keen to resolve. So the idea is, is that we get everyone in one room and we can try and work through solutions and work through um, different options that are available to them and us and then we can hopefully come to an agreed amount that we can go to. So that's, that's the way that we're going to do it and that's the... The collaboration and the the con sort of constructive nature and spirit that I that I hope that you can join us in. Do you have a second question, Gary? Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor King's come to this fairly late, in, fairly recently late in the day, but questions about this and pressure for action have been carrying on in some parts for almost three years. At the moment, the the garden is completely so unable to make bids. For grants that it would Gary, be you're going to ask to a question because it is not got its license or can't transfer can we give it get an insurance that this will actually happen next week at the meeting i can't give them um, the outcome of a conversation that i've ha not have yet and so i'm not going to put any guarantees or promises right now the point is is that we sit down we try and negotiate together it's not for the garden to, to have a hard line on this nor is it for us to have a hard line on it we're trying to reach an agreed solution and there's quite a few factors to be bringing it so i can't simplify it into the binary way that you'd like me to do and just say it can be all signed off next week it's a bit more complex than that but i'm very keen to get it done as soon as possible and that's what I'll commit to and you know Kate and me we're speaking every week so we're, our communication lines are open I'm happy to talk to you as well thank you so we're going to move on now to green question two which is Christine Townsend two questions on local development do you have supplementaries yes um, so the first one is about the um, East Street 66 um, flats that are going up now um, these are 50 flats um, as you know, there's a lot of development going on, on in our ward. Um, it's a low car zone. Really encourage the mayor to kind of go back into the planning department and include this development. Will you do that? Because we need to take our residents with us as we're looking to develop the BS3 area. You're going to have to forgive me, and I'm, I'm sorry for your, the discipline you're trying to bring to the, 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 the meeting. I can't, 
quite follow because the initial question was about whether it would be excluded from the RPZ and we were saying we don't see why it should be excluded from parking restrictions. Is there, am I not following you? Yeah, it's a local, yeah. So, so do you want it included or excluded? Excluded at the so moment. So you want to make provision for car parking? No, I want it excluded for the per for the permits for the RPZ to fit in line with the low car zone policy. Oh, you don't want anyone to be able to park anywhere near it? And you don't want them to, you don't want residents to be able to have permits? Yeah. It's oh, a low right. car okay. zone, yeah. Okay. Um, well, it, I mean, the, the, any scheme would come in line with the way the, the, the RPZ uh, worked. I'd be happy to, as you're the councillor, uh, I'd be happy to uh, hear the, the, the fuller case you'd make for um, a, a deviation from the way the RPZ works in general for a scheme that was happening inside the RPZ. Uh, but as it is, it would operate within that, uh, within that framework. But please make your case. Second supplementary. Uh, yes. Um, so this is um, a garage that's seven is a piece of land that's seven and a half feet wide. I'm just interested to understand, so that I can tell the residents what might be developed on a seven and a half feet wide piece of land. Yeah, that's a question I'm going to have to ask as well, <laughs> to be perfectly frank. So uh, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk outside. Yeah, I have seen some narrow houses on. Uh, we should go to Princess Victoria Street in Clifton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can but, see what they can uh, build. Yeah, we'll have a look and we'll reach out to you outside of here, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, now we're on to Labour question two, which is Paul Coggan, Roth Sleeping. It's your second question. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yeah, um, uh, thank you for the response. Uh, the 15% uh, decrease in, in rough sleeping is, is great. And speaking as somebody who was homeless on the streets of Bristol 20 years ago, um, I have personal interest in it. I, I was wondering, has any thought been put into making this a public health issue, um, given that um, the life expectancy of, of people on the streets, you know, is drastically reduced, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and, and maybe getting funding from the government from that kind of stream? Well, I mean, to be honest, even uh, last week um, with the LGA, we were raising concerns about public health funding uh, from central government, seeing as so much finance is controlled uh, from the centre. Um, so, uh, we, we, look, in terms of rough sleeping, there is a homelessness commitment, uh, uh, sorry, a public health commitment to it because it does leave people in a, a state of you know, additional uh, vulnerability to sickness, and that plays over into um, our, our health services as well. Um, it's one of the reasons we say that a good quality home, a good quality affordable home in a mixed, stable community is one of the most significant policy tools we have for producing a more fair, more inclusive and more well uh, uh, city. Um, but certainly we can, um, it, well, um, Ellie leads for us from, from public health. Paul, it may even be something that you would take on uh, um, when you're sitting in the seat uh, later this year as well. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to talk more with you about that. Thank you. Uh, so we now move on to um, the Conservative question two, which is Steve Smith. We've got two questions on public rights of way. Yeah, th thank you very much, uh, my Lord Mayor, and thank you, Marvin, for the response. Just to want to be clear, I'm not trying to point fingers with this one. I think it would be a little unfair for us to try and blame you for something that's been going wrong since before some members of this council were born. Um, you know, we, we might try and put things at your door occasionally, but not that one. Um, <laughs> Would, would, would you, uh, supplementary to my first question, though, would, do you accept that the council does have a, a clear legal duty here, which at the moment we're not complying with? We have lots of legal duties um, in, the, in, in the council, um, and uh, one of the things we've been pointed out to government is, is that we're very stretched. And again, it, it's, it's, it's opportune because this time last week I was on the LGA you know, exec uh, meeting, and one of the points he made to the minister you know, in that conversation was to, to recognise that that the challenge we're facing with local government finance now uh, means that not only are our frontline um, services being challenged, but our backroom capacity. And I mean, it's reflected in the chamber sometimes, to be perfectly frank. Anyone will turn up with a placard for you know, libraries, public toilets and parks, but no one comes and says, save our planners and save our lawyers. Um, and yet it's that backroom capacity that keeps these backroom processes working that when they don't work, people get uh, so frustrated with. Um, so look, there, there's a review going on. There's also a committee element to this as well. There's maybe a taste of things to come. We'll see. Uh, but there is a committee um, element um, and uh, some work is being done to reprioritize uh, the work of the committee and, and to, uh, along with some work about a piece of national legislation, will hopefully streamline the process and make, make decisions easier to come to. 
Do you have a second supplementary? Or yeah, second supplementary. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Um, whilst it's unfair to blame you for this, Marvin, I think it's also a little unfair to blame austerity, since this has been going on since Tony Blair was your new Prime Minister. Um, however, second supplementary is, can you give any estimate as to when this backlog might be cleared? Well, the whole backlog, I mean, I'd have to go and talk more with the, the team about that, but a piece of work is happening right now. Um, I think, the, first off, they're looking at the, 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 uh, the whole uh, slate of um, applications that have come in. I think we've had 12 at the moment uh, on the, on the oh, 11 outstanding uh, DMMOs um, in the waiting. Uh, but I think we'll get news about Lockleys very soon, and then Stoke Lodge Fields uh, will be coming very soon after that. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move straight on to Green Question 3. Yeah. By the way, you know, Tony Blair hasn't been in power for 14 years, right? So if you're still blaming Tony Blair, for, that's, that's a little bit of a stretch, right? <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever mentioned Thatcher in the chamber. Uh, you may have. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on then to Green Question 3, uh, which is Lisa Stone got questions on bus cuts. Lisa, do you have any supplementaries? Yeah, it's a quick supplementary. It wasn't actually, the question wasn't really about bus cuts, it was about how we made a decision to remove certain buses, community transports, and, 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 and keep others. Um, and it was about the equalities impact statement, which was created by Weka. So basically, all I'm saying is that are you um, interested in making sure that um, you know, the elderly and the vulnerable are served by the community. That's all I'm asking. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry, was it, am I interested in making sure that the elderly and vulnerable are served by Bristol? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you are. But like, I'm, what, what I'm trying to get at, really, to be honest with you, is my supplementary question is really, did we, as a, did Bristol City Council consider the Equalities Impact Statement from WECA when we were making the decision to withdraw certain bus services, like the 512? That's it. I think you're, there's a lot of conflation going on there. We didn't make the decision to withdraw bus services. That's really important so that we don't end up misleading people um, accidentally. Um, I would also say, in, just in line with the, the opening question, um, you know, it, it, when you, in your question, you implied that you know, we withheld money as an authority. One is, you know, money's a challenge for us. I'm sure we'll recognize that. But secondly, you did have every opportunity to put an amendment in if it was a priority. But then you obviously, if the amendment was accepted, you would have actually had to have not dodged and, and actually voted for the budget, not abstained on it. Um, so, so do take those opportunities you do have to put your values into actual real world decisions uh, for, for the council to accept or not accept. Yeah, oh, thank you, uh, um, uh, Mayor. Um, but that wasn't my question. But thank you. I do understand where you come from. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Um, now we've got Labour question three from Brenda Massey says here health infrastructure one question thank you and thank you for the response however this does not address the issue of the provision of health care in areas with considerable new housing either in the process of being built or about to start in bristol there's already increasing demand on health services such as doctor surgeries and also an ongoing lack of dental provision can this be taken into account when new housing is planned and pressure put on the government to provide these essential health services using SIL just won't be adequate and we could have really good housing projects going ahead without the supporting infrastructure. So th this, this question of uh, facilities around housing development has, has been coming up a, f uh, you know, a few times. So I'll say a few things. Uh, one is there is a National Health Service um, who obviously have a significant size budget. I think it's the fifth biggest organisation on the planet and that's the responsibility to provide health services. And so having the conversation in this chamber or even in the pages of the local press is, you know, is good and has a role, but actually having a conversation with the National Health Service itself is, you know, is better. Um, I think we face a challenge as an authority as well because we have a housing crisis and uh, Paul asked a question about it um, earlier and uh, obviously the opening question from Councillor Stafford Townsend, uh, no, anyway, uh, there's a question in there about housing. <laughs> um, uh, re references our housing crisis too. So we have to build homes and we have to build them at pace. Um, and, and the dilemma we face then is we must build at pace because housing is one of the single most significant interventions we can do to improve population health. A warm home in a balanced community where people have safety and, and, all, and, and all the rest of it. So housing itself is a health intervention, reduces the likelihood of people getting sick. Um, at the same time, we need those, the, the, those more kind of overt NHS services, the, the primary care and the acute services to keep up pace as well. So we recognize that. 
Um, what, what I can say is going back to the point about the ICS and the ICB and the ICP, that's where those conversations are having. And what we've scheduled uh, with them is a piece of work to look, to map and understand the, o, the whole care system for Bristol. It needs to go beyond the boundaries as well. Um, so we want to look at that whole care system and that includes entry points, uh, financial flows, pathways through as well, uh, from prevention uh, to acute services and back out. And, and at the risk of raising an old question, it goes back to one of the points that Conservatives raised last time about parking, that we want the question of access to care services, such as transport, to be part of the consideration of that healthcare system that the NHS takes joint responsibility uh, with us for. So I'm not saying it's easy, but I am saying we are wrestling with it. Thank you. Okay, so now moving on to question uh, from Councillor Gulandras on modifying new parking charges. You have two questions. Do you have supplementaries? I, I do indeed, Lord Mayor. Thank you. And thank you, Marvin, for the answers. And I'm very comforted that uh, blue badge holders won't actually have to pay to use uh, the car park for the, the, the GP surgery. <clears throat> but there will be other uh, patients who will be fairly elderly without blue badge, uh, blue badge passes. And what I wondered is, is it possible, do you think, for the council to give the GP surgery a very small number of passes that they could give to patients visiting the surgery so that they don't end up having to pay? I, I, didn't know, I didn't remember your question was next, but I kind of preempted it in my conversation with, uh, with, with Councillor Massey. I, we want to explore the potential of that. Um, there is a cost to it, uh, and I want to talk to our health partners about about that cost, considering that I think transport is part, well, transport itself is a health intervention, breaking down social isolation, all the rest of it, but transport is part of the health system because it impacts on access. Uh, we recognize that. We're in a dilemma, they're in a dilemma, and I hope that we can sit around the table and resolve it. And again, as I, I'd be really happy to talk to you about those conversations that we have uh, with them, keep you up to speed. Do you have a second supplementary, John? Yes, my, my second one is, again, thank you for, for, for being willing to talk to traders and indeed have a, a good consultation to see whether there's a different way of, of dealing with the parking on a cost-neutral basis. We understand that. Um, do you have any idea when the public consultation will take place? I'll get an exact date for you. I, I'll, I will ask the team to say where they are on a schedule. Thank you. Moving on to green question four, which is uh, Councillor Plowden. Do you have any supplementary? Yes, yes, and thanks for your answer. I think we found something that we can agree on, which um, unfortunately the preferred model is uh, not legal at the moment. So I'm wondering, um, really, if we're going to get any franchising, it's going to take a long time to get any bus franchising. So I'm just wondering what the next steps are to try and actually start the process. Well, obviously, that would be with the combined authority, and everyone has the opportunity to speak to the combined authority uh, uh, directly. I mean, I, I would say I have shared it in the chamber a few times, you know, I will attend the combined authority meetings, uh, but every councillor in this chamber is elected, um, and Bristol City Council is a member of the uh, of the West of England combined authority, and so every councillor can attend those meetings and make the case, and not just ask me to to speak for them at the meetings. So please attend and, and make your case. I, I did ask the Metro Mayor this yesterday, and I didn't really get a clear answer. Um, do you have a second supplementary? I do. Yes, uh, just a little bit worried uh, what we're doing. Uh, right now to make sure that CRSTS is deliverable in the time frame and not just uh, hoping that the administration that follows you will reach consensus quickly because we really need to be uh, pushing that and not be in the position we are with the uh, Transforming Cities Fund. So can I just get clarify? You, you have concern about the administration that's going to follow me here or at the Command Authority? Oh, well, your answer talks about um, hoping that the administration that follows will be able to reach consensus quickly. And it, it just makes me a bit alarmed because it feels like um, we've known about this funding stream for quite some time. The biggest single risk is the time with, within which we've got yeah. to invest the, the funding. And I want to uh, just hear about what's happening to make sure that we're on a good trajectory. So obviously we're working uh, with our combined authority partners to make sure uh, that lands. But notwithstanding, it is important that whatever comes after reach consensus quickly and begins keeps making uh, making Bristol's case at the combined um, authority. But you don't have to wait until May 2024 to do that. You can actually start as a group of parties getting together now and working out what the priorities would be. You have a committee to organise a committee system. Um, I suggest you begin feeding your priorities into that um, body. Okay, moving on now to um, Councillor Bennett. has two questions. Your first one is on Gorham Holmes. 
Thank Do you have a supplementary? You. Yeah, one supplementary on both questions, if that's okay, Lord Mayor. Yeah, um, we'll, do, the, you, we'll do them in different order, though, so do this one and then we come back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, Marvin, for, for the answer. I um, really appreciate hearing about the work that Gorham Homes are doing to tackle the housing crisis. One example is the Redcliffe Ray um, development, which Bristol Housing Festival um, helped s select a housing provider on a former car park and as a principal of you putting homes on former car parks just makes complete sense. So I was wondering if you or Tom were in a position to provide an update on the timescales on that project. Tom, would you like to answer? Yeah, happy to. The project's progressing really well. We had a really good design competition um, where we involved local stakeholders uh, in that process. So um, they're currently working up the detailed designs and we'll be submitting to planning later this year, but I can get you a more exact timeline uh, from Gorham. Thank you. Okay, so we move on now to uh, Conservative question four, which is Mark Weston about Bristol's proposed underground. You've got two supplementaries. Thank you very much, my Lord Mayor. Um, right, supplementary to question one. Um, considering the recent costs contained within the leaked report from Wecker, um, will any of the 13.6 million still be looking at an ash transit option that includes underground elements? Well, we have a we have a committee meeting um, on Friday, um, and uh, uh, th what happens to that 13.6 uh, million uh, pounds will be confirmed in that committee meeting. Thank you. Uh, second supplementary to question two: um, Considering that 18 billion price tag that was mentioned in the leaked underground report, and considering the fact that the CRSTS, which was mentioned. A minute ago, is our largest transport grant that I think I've ever seen, certainly in my 17 years as councillor, and that's 500 million. Is it actually still feasible to be pushing for a mass transit system that costs 36 times that level? I, I, I see what you're doing there by keep dropping in the word uh, uh, leaked and secret, but oh, that, Mark, no, no, Mark, Mark subtle's the furthest thing from your uh, <laughs> sphere of influence. Uh, um. <laughs> I think, uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it's not hard. Um, <laughs> look, again, I mean, in terms of, we'll, more, there'll be more conversation around mass transit system as the week goes on, as I'm sure. But look, Bristol has a, a huge transport challenge. It's been raised again today. The transport challenge happens in the context of a growing population, a city that is going to grow by another 80,000 people over the next uh, 27, 26, 27 years. In the context of a climate emergency in which we need uh, modal shift and any solution we put forward must meet the challenges of providing fully segregated transport in an increasingly crowded 42 square miles that we have um, in a city in which land is being competed for uh, by um, active travel uh, solutions, homes, leisure, and parks. Um, I think we need, a, we need an approach that, that meets the scale of that challenge. Um, I think it's incredibly difficult and now impossible to deliver a, a mass transit system that is segregated if you do not look at three-dimensional solutions, as they, as they call it. Uh, just picture trying to have a segregated transport system uh, in the center of Bristol what that means for access to the middle of the city. If we think that people are uh, concerned about the clean air zone, you know, you can add some bells to it. And I think that while we can throw around the, uh, the language uh, and, and talk about the, the cost, I think this is also about uh, really taking the city seriously. Uh, no, Andy Burnham is not bulking at HS2, and I understand that uh, the new Green Councillor is, is a supporter of HS2 um, also. Uh, trees, tr um, uh, uh, Tracy Braben is not bulking up mass transit system, and Gloucester are talking about mass transit system uh, for Gloucester. Newcastle has one. £19 billion was the cost of one line in London. If other places are asking for the best for their populations, I think we should ask for the best for ours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have green, fifth green question is from Councillor Fodor. Um, do you have supplementaries, Martin? Um, yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Yes, I mean, in, in your reply, you've just, uh, Mayor, you've just said um, there's no single, if I quote, there's no universal rule. But what I asked in my question was, what are the criteria being used when we're disposing of land and buildings or being given, giving long leases, 
uh, and at the moment there's been no transparency or consistency of this. So what are the, what are the criteria? I think, I th I, I, if I could just give you a bit of feedback, Martin, sometimes your questions are either incredibly long, the preamble over four or five paragraphs before, <laughs> um, or they're quite loose and all-encompassing, and we do often find them quite difficult to follow, um, and that plays into our ability to um, answer them. And I, and I think sometimes being a bit more specific and a bit more uh, to, to, to the point in your questions uh, would help us um, and, and the officers. That, but I mean, so, so we gave you the answer we could. I'll go away and I'll see if there is a, a single document that pulls together uh, the, the checklist that I, I, I guess you're looking for. I haven't seen it, uh, but what we do do is in every instance, uh, try to work for the best value uh, for the, the council and the best outcomes uh, for the city. But dealing across different kinds of every, you know, the, the kind of situations we look at with our own buildings, with land, uh, the deals we enter into actually often require, uh, you, know, a, you know, a nimbleness and a, you know, a different approach to each one. So there'll be a different way of approaching, but, but good financial value and good outcomes for Bristol will, will be the core to our approach. But I'll, I'll get some more to you and hopefully we can work out what the question was. Thank, thank oh, you. Um, Lord Mayor, both my questions were a single sentence, by the way. I know, I just, I feel, I mean, I'm looking at it here, it says, what was the criteria, Martin? Yeah, so and, and I did ask, so I hopefully will now hear. But in my second... Second one? Yeah, my second supplementary. What you've said is you could offer a, a sort of briefing to me uh, regarding uh, the, the, the issues around um, the pre-letting of 40 years of LNG's um, unbuilt, as yet unbuilt office. But I, I think all members would like to know the business case for pre-leasing a whole new office block uh, for, from LNG, which guarantees their profit, when we've actually got lots of our empty office space that we're rationalising. Can you get Bristol? your question, Martin, please? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the mayor was worried about financial guarantees for the arena. Now he's giving a 40-year guarantee to the person building something What's in What's your place. question? I, I think all members should be okay. told. I don't want to be personally told, but not, well, not the other 69 members. I just had a bit of push, pushback, but you just illustrated the very point I made about your questions. Uh, we were around the houses and then somehow we, we, we pick out what you're actually trying to get out in the middle. Um, look, I mean, the, 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 the Temple Island deal has been scrutinized extensively. I, I even received notification of certain members of the chamber using Google to price up office price space as a way of trying to cross-examine the, the LNG staff at the time. So it was well, you know, it was well attended. And, and received a lot of uh, public attention. You are, well, I'm not going to ask a question as you come back, but it seems like you want another briefing on that that Temple Island deal, including with the office space. But as I said, it's been it's been done quite a lot. I, I, I do think all um, members are entitled to something. There's there's a consultation with a, a I blank am not piece going to allow you, Martin. It. Martin, you've had your questions. Sure. You've had your answer. But there is a blank bit you've of land. You've had your questions and you've had your answer. Thank you. I will say that what I do try to do here, and, and I'm, not, you know, I'm not saying this from a defensive point of view, just purely as an explanation, I think it's important to get the answers. There's no point in having members' questions, but, you know, and I will explore answers, but I will stop it as well. And I think you know, I have good judgment on this, and I think I do it well, and I'm going to continue doing that. So I'm moving on now to Labour question five, which is Marley Bennett again, and the second one, Marley, on buses. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thanks again, Marvin, for, for this answer. Um, I would was at the city gathering and heard Doug Clarenbold speak and spoke to him about the number five route which had served Stapleton in my ward and a number of other neighbourhoods and he um, explained the difficulties with providing this service on a, on a market basis and I also spoke with um, David Redrow we all know um, about the, uh, the services that had been supported that there being um, services with lower patronage that had um, had some support to it. So I, I'd just like again to speak uh, in support of um, restoring some form of a bus service in Stapleton and ask that you um, take that forward into the, any conversations you have with Becca. I'll do it myself and have previously attended Becca meetings, but it would be really good if we could get something out on this. Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to do that. And obviously we'll, we'll talk to Don as well. And as you get, and I'm pleased that you say you have a 10. I know you did that before as well. Um, uh, so that'd be welcome. And I would say, um, again, being at the city gathering, I think what we've tried to do is build relationships with our partners. 
um, so that we don't end up in a situation where we just lift heavy burdens, stick them on people's shoulders, and then don't lift a finger to help them. Uh, we we recognise the challenge that Doug uh, is facing as a as an MD. Um, we 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 want the best for Bristol, and we're incredibly disappointed by what's happening. But we also need to, if we want real solutions and real partnership, we have to recognise the challenges he's facing. And I, I, I would say, just take the opportunity here to say just how powerful I thought it was for him as the MD for first, uh, so much profile to stand in a hall of, of around 350 people and talk about the challenges he faces and, and his hopes. Um, you know, and I, and I congratulate him on that. Having said that, you know, I believe that public ownership for buses would be the best way and uh, there's no substitute for, uh, for financing for buses. So hopefully publicly owned and, um, and adequately financed uh, will be the future under a, a Labour government. Thank you. Uh, moving on now to question uh, from Councillor Gollop on transparencies and Bristol Underground project. Two questions, two supplementaries, Jeff. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Marvin, my question, you, you've come up with, you commented about the cost, but does that report make any attempt to look at the viability of servicing the debt and repaying the loans, as well as the running costs of the mass transit system. That's all in the that's all in the process of developing the business case uh, for it. As I've shared many times in this uh, this chamber, it, de delivering a major infrastructure uh, program like mass transit, elements of under, elements of over ground, uh, whatever combination, or even people have talked about going above ground on on the rails, x number of feet above the the planet surface, whatever options uh, that end up remaining on the table will be subject to one is their the physical ability to deliver them as a feat of engineering um, but also the the business case uh, for uh, for their uh, for their operation uh, and that will be tested anyway because no one is asking again it's a I I, I know the council I, doesn't really have a track record of delivering big in many ways but when we're dealing with this scale of infrastructure delivery, it's not all about a blank public check. It's not that Bristol City Council will pay for whatever the end cost uh, turns out to be, or even the combined authority. This would be about an enabling, uh, uh, an enabling uh, uh, investment from the public sector, um, and then making a case for private sector investment uh, to partner with that. All the conversations where we are having at the moment around decarbonisation and city development, whether it be the RSA or with the FCDO or the COP preparations, all talk about the, the scale of investment that's needed being well beyond the public purse. Um, so inevitably, whenever we start talking about that, that blended financial model, we have to talk about um, a, a, a project in which the business case stacks up. And if the business case does not stack up, then there will be no finance available because no one's going to put any money into it. But what we should do is pursue the business case until we are definitively told it does not stack up. Um, and as yet, we, that's not been, that, that we, we haven't found that. Thank you. Do you have a second supplementary? I do indeed, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, Marvin, thank you for your second answer. I'm surprised you don't use it much more often for the sympathy it will evoke. Um, <laughs> but can I ask your help? Because as a Weka Scrutiny member, very often we ask questions about projects and are told that we have to ask Bristol. And we get pushed from pillar to post and we can't find the answer. Could you please arrange a briefing for all Bristol scrutiny members on WECA so that we can discuss our queries and concerns and then agree how collectively we can approach WACA to get the answers. Because at the moment, backbench members are not getting the help that they need to understand this. Uh, and I think maybe you're not either. So if we could work together, it would be a really positive way forward. Thank you. So it's a very timely uh, question, I, I think, uh, Jeff. Um, uh, one is I would I would say and and you know I, I always say I, I don't I would never ever tell scrutiny what it should have on its agenda it's always up to scrutiny to decide on its its agenda um, but 
we are open to being scrutinised on the role we have played in the combined authority if if that was to come up, right? Um, secondly, we can do that, and we'll do. And, and actually, why don't we offer that, you know, for a cross party? Because I think it's incredibly important for those of you that are preparing for the committee system that within that you have a think about how the committee system will be engaging with the with the forums in which we participate. Now, the, the combined authority is one of those forums, but other places in which we currently engage, that it's really important to have our voices heard, are, for example, at Core Cities. Um, it will be the case that we'll need to have a, a clear voice at 3CI, uh, through which you know, we've identified the 200 plus billion pounds of decarbonisation investment opportunities, some in Bristol. Uh, we we'll have to think about our presence on the local government association and then to the extent to which the, the council wishes to continue to engage with some of the international work that we do around COP and the sustainable development goals, there'll need to be some coherence. So maybe it's a piece of work that with the committee of committees, uh, we begin thinking about that transition to that level of engagement and representation in those forums. Thank you. Okay, so now we're on to uh, green question six, which is David Wilcox. Questions about Concord Way and Ashley Down Station. Do you have supplementaries? I do, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm not sure how familiar the Mayor is with the uh, proposed diversion for pedestrians and cyclists along the, the northern edge of Muller Road, because the plan is to mix pedestrians and cyclists on a narrow stretch of pavement. So there is conflict designed into that. And I just need to make sure that the Council has looked at every possible situation to avoid that because it is creating conflict between pedestrians and cyclists i'm i'm always happy to go back over i i think what they say measure twice cut once right um so i can go back it's interesting because i've just come out of a conversation around floating bus stops as well that i think are quite uh, likely to increase the likelihood of conflict between pedestrians and cyclists so it's a, it's a good warning to take forward into that question uh, when it comes up um, in in forum later today uh, but yeah, I'm happy to have a, another check over and get back to you with the results of that. And do you have a second supplementary, David? Uh, not on the second one, no. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Okay, so we're going to move on. I don't think Fabian's here, is he? So, um, on Graham isn't here, and Heather Mack isn't here, and Richard Eddy is here. Richard, you got supplementaries? We have had interest uh, in, in companies bringing the, bringing the technology uh, to Bristol. Uh, actually, I, mean, I wouldn't say that people haven't knocked on the door and said, "Here, here's X pounds," because we haven't got a final price, uh, you know, on on what things would cost, and and the full the full journey of the business case has not been, uh, you know, completed. That's why there's there's work the work that needs to uh, to progress. Uh, but the the one of the points we've made is. Uh, repeatedly and it's important not to get the technologies mixed up people have automatically jumped on the, the idea of a London underground uh, and now they've assumed the rail based and 100% underground London is well, less than 45% underground most of it's above ground um, and I think we've moved beyond steel wheels on steel rails right it's a whole new uh, world of technology um, out there now and as we were going through the journey we were looking at those new uh, new technologies, but yeah, people have approached nothing big and formal, just 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 kind of talking to us, you know, uh, you know about our, you know, about our commitments, about our city's needs, and and saying that they'd like us to talk to them in the future about being part of the solution. Thank you, Richard. You have a second question. I do, um, Mr. Mayor. With respect, it's all very well to hear about medium to longer term planned work now rail improvements. What are you proposing to do for Bristolians who will have their vital bus services axed be on the 31st of March? Uh, can I just say, just, just a context for this. First off, and I've heard this, this kind of argument made by one of the opposition leaders on this TV show they were on, it. Because, you're, because you're planning for the long term doesn't mean you're ignoring the short term. Right? the immediate challenges in front of you. We, we'd be in a much better position as a city 
if 20 years ago, right, and you were in the chamber 20 years ago as well, right? I think you were two decades serving councillor, councillor already? Three. Three decades, okay. What if 30 years ago the council had actually grabbed the city's challenges by the scuff of the neck, anticipated the growing population, anticipated the housing crisis, you know, anticipated the, well, we were in a transport crisis then, we had problems with congestion, and started doing that work uh, then. We'd be in, we would be thankful for it today. Uh, and as the proverb I used often, the best time to plant a tree was 40 years ago, second best time is today. All this work should have been done years ago to prepare the city for such a time as this. And it wasn't done for whatever reason the city did not come to terms with the challenges that were upon it. And now we're on the back foot as a city, dealing with gr rapid population growth, a climate emergency, ecological uh, crisis you know, you know, upon us. Um, so you know, we'll continue to do the work. We'll work with a combined authority on the bus solution. If you had come to the city gathering, I don't know if you uh, attended or your party attended, you'd have heard um, our colleague uh, Francis McGarry from uh, uh, National Rail talk through all of the developments in our rail offering, the Portway Park and Ride, Ashley Down, Portis Headline being developed, 95 million pounds for Temple Meads. So we're delivering on a rail offer for this part of the world in a way the city <coughs> hasn't seen uh, for decades as well. So we'll deal with the short term, but it's our responsibility to think about what children being born today are gonna to inherit when they're, when, they, uh, when, they're, when they're adults in the city and we're all gone. Thank you. Okay, so we, we're now around to, um, uh, Green Councillor Patrick McAllister is asking questions on harbour feeds for the first time in Member Forum. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I uh, note the drop in sessions uh, on the consultations that were held. Um, unfortunately, the overwhelming feeling in the harbour community is that these were insufficient, and that's shown by how most people only found out when the proposals did hit the media. Uh, whilst I'm grateful for your clarification that the Harbour Authority does not have to consult on increasing fees and charges, would it not have been fairer, more democratic and more likely for the proposals to gain community acceptance if the uh, consultations had been carried out in a more comprehensive manner? Well, again, I, I think I would just say let's, in our questions, we throw these words around as though some things are unfair, undemocratic and all the rest of it. Those are, you know, I think we could do ourselves as a chamber as being a little bit more intellectually rigorous about some of these uh, phrases that we uh, uh, we throw around. Um, that the, the harbour fees had not been uh, looked at in, in 20 years. Uh, we've undertaken a benchmarking exercise. As I said to your colleague, uh, we'll be happy to look at whether we can put out a redacted version of that benchmarking exercise uh, to uh, to really show uh, you know how the process we've gone through at the same time uh, we at the same time will will look at the the, the overall um, harbor review we have to take account of the fact that we are in a financial challenge uh, it, it, we get this kind of approach in the chamber often say I, I know there's a financial challenge but right there is a financial challenge there's over half a million pound impact on our general fund right things that you would want spent on in other areas we have to find a way of making the the harbor uh, account for itself. We have to find a way of getting the investment in the harbour to bring all the facilities up to speed, and that can't be done from the general fund. It has to be from within, uh, from within the harbour's financial you know, um, envelope and, and, and runnings. So again, we'd be happy to talk to you more about it if you want to have a constructive conversation, uh, but we do have to find a way of making the harbour uh, self-sufficient. Do you have a second supplementary? Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I'd be very much um, happy, happy to have a conversation uh, in a constructive tone, hopefully, about this matter. Um, I was just wondering, uh, following on from uh, your response quite nicely, actually, um, is the administration aware of the, to my mind, rather high quality analysis that's been carried out by the um, Boats Community Association of the um, sort of discrepancy in services um, between in Bristol compared to a menu of facilities in fellow harbour cities? Um, and would this potentially be uh, looked at in the future reviews um, that you were mentioning just earlier. Thank you. Well, the, 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 the facilities has to be part of the conversation. The question is, well, how are you going to improve those facilities? Are you advocating that we take it from the general fund? Uh, there has to be a way of looking at the way money flows around the harbour for what it is to create the space to be able to invest in the facilities. And that's not just for the people that are staying there, and I, see, I use the word staying because we've got to look at the difference between domestic license and leisure licenses. Leisure licenses are 15 nights a year, um, so if there's people been staying more than that, there's a you know, bit of an issue with the license and the price of it. Um, uh, but also makes the harbour available um, uh, and welcoming to everyone um, in the city as well. So it does need that, you know, investment 
um, in it. But again, that means us looking at the whole range of council finances. It's one of the delicate questions we're having around Red Catch Park, right? How do we uh, unlock the, the social value of all that work up there, find a way of making all of our council assets uh, work uh, financially in a way that is fair to the people who, who are using them and, and make use of them as well? It's a, it's a challenge for us. But as I said, if we want to have a constructive conversation, not just look for Twitter material, then you know we're all in. Uh, thanks very much. I don't think I'll be tweeting this. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, there are two members um, in the chamber who have put in statements. I think we've just about got a time for people to speak to them for one minute. So um, we have um, Councillor Edwards. Emma, you've got quest a statement on Concord Way diversion. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. While the news of the work starting on Ashley Down train station is very welcomed, there are sadly many concerns about the diversions put in place for cyclists who use Concord Way. While we appreciate and accept that Concord Way has to be closed in part for the duration of the project, we don't accept and appreciate the diversions put in place and pedestrians and cyclists have been so thought, poorly thought of. The diversion sends cyclists onto a section of busy road, a lane prone to flooding and in some parts makes cyclists dismount. Concord Way sees over a thousand cycle journal, jour, journeys a day. It is a commuter route for Ashley Down, Lockleys, Hawfield, South Meadfield and beyond. It serves Fairfield School and is used by pupils there. Pushing these cyclists, some of whom may be children or less confident cyclists, onto a busy road puts them at risk. Active Travel England provides guidelines for cycling infrastructure in their LTN 120 document. This diversion is not LTN 120 compliant. This diversion is not for a few weeks or months, it's for at least a year, likely more, and therefore should come under the same guidelines as any permanent cycling route would. This poorly thought out diversion um, route shows... I think I'm, I'm, you're over time, Emma, and okay. we have all read your statement, so it's really to speak to your statement rather than to read it, so just make oh. your salient point. Oh, OK, sorry, Thank apologies, you. I've not made a statement before. No. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to agree with what Councillor Wilcox said. You know, there is... Um, Thank you. There's a lot of conflict. So I just seem to have encouraged you to speak for longer, and that was not my intention. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And the final one is um, Councillor Hopkins. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I won't attempt to go through the whole statement, but I would hope that as many members as possible actually look at this and read it, because it tells a horrific story. Uh, and I hope that we don't have to come back to this after the meeting that's planned for next week. Basically, we have two. Uh, organizations in partnership. All of you have actually seen uh, Mike Alden, who won the uh, uh, f Sports Personality of the Year uh, Unsung Hero Award, National Award, uh, for his football club. They are locked out of the, the pavilion in Red Catch Park because the council can't do the paperwork to hand it across. They don't want gifts of money. They're quite happy to do the place up themselves. They've already done that job once before. And then there'll be somewhere for the disabled teams and the young girls' teams to, uh, to change so that they can play. And the other one is the Red Catch Community Garden, who five years ago took a, over an empty bowling green and have made it into a staggeringly thriving organisation that produces a huge amount Thank of you. community value. Thank you. And yet, and yet, I'll only be 10 seconds, and yet the council want to change the rent on that by two and a half thousand percent, which has got nothing to do with the value of the bowling okay, green. Okay, this meeting has now ended. Uh, money so, grabbing. Councillor Hopkins, thank you. Thank you all very much. Um, it seems to be very packed, 60 minutes. Thank you. We are, we've got a 15-minute um, recess, and we're all back in here at um, 4.45 for the extraordinary full council. Thank you.